There's no two ways about it. Harry and Meghan are in big trouble. The universe just gave the couple new marching orders. Time's up. Not to mention the fact that new allegations just might sink the SS Harry Meg. Plus, nobody wants them around anymore. Most of all, the soon-to-be new occupants of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Truthfully, I don't give a damn about Prince Harry, uh, and I don't think this country does either. Put it this way, Harry's just bought a house in Portugal, yeah. and it might come in pretty handy in yeah. the next few months, because Donald Trump has said in the past that he wouldn't protect Harry, that he would be on his own, and that if it was down to me, this is Donald Trump, if it was down to me, um, he wouldn't have any protection. And the Heritage Foundation uh, tried to expose his form, mm. and in the end, he was protected, and a judge rules, ruled that... Um, the form would never be revealed. I just wonder whether now Trump is in power. I'm not saying it's top of his priority list, but eventually that form might uh, be exposed. The great news, the Megans have been apart for three months, so backing should be pretty easy, especially since nothing's holding them back in the States. You got Hollywood cutting ties, Netflix is moving on, and the election didn't turn out the way they thought to. Plus you had Tina Brown just trash Megan, Thomas Markle shared the truth, and American Riviera Orchard, it's got a boatload of new problems. And all that happened while Queen Elizabeth's new eviction plans came to life. Just think about it. What would Queen Elizabeth say about Harry today after he once again abused the memory of an American hero right after Hollywood turned him into a punchline? Tell me something people know about Prince Harry. He's married to Meghan Markle. He's married to Meghan Markle. He's the Prince of England. Robert, name some people know about Prince Harry. I don't know much about him, but I hope he got money. <laughs> you know, at one time, Meghan and Harry had it made in the shade. The couple literally had it all. The only thing they had to do was be decent, hardworking, and loyal to the royal family. That's it. Just be do their duty honorably to the citizens of the United Kingdom. And if they didn't want to do that, they could go away and live a quiet, private life. But they chose not to. Now the pair make headlines for all the wrong reasons, like having the characters exposed. There that a lot of people don't know about, mm -hmm. and that's where uh, Megan gave my father an ultimatum. Disown Tom and Samantha if you want to come to the wedding. And my dad specifically says, I wouldn't do that to any of my children. That was before those pictures. That was, that was an ultimatum before the wedding, which then everybody knows that my dad had a heart attack, probably because of overwhelming stress. Mm -hmm. But there were several elements in there that, you know, Megan wanting her way and being so hard headed and not being flexible, except for what she wants, you know, who tells their, who tells their, their parent to disown the other kids? You know, my father's not gonna do that. The Montecito merchandisers failed on every front. They preach love and kindness morning, noon and night in order to try to build their brand. Yet they forgot that they kicked their families to the curb, but the people didn't. They see right through the hypocrisy. Just take a look at the other day. You had the queen of self-pity and his spray tan spouse reunited in order to play trick-or-treat as caring royals. Through trauma-informed practices, we help parents come together to forge strong bonds, offering healing support through community with the ultimate goal of prioritizing safety at the source. Parents from the Parents Network are sharing their personal stories about their family's experiences with you all this week. We hope their voices and message will reaffirm this room's commitment to taking a clear-eyed approach to the reality of violence targeting children in this digital age. Everything the delusional duo does is an act, simply a performance. They showed off their poppies, yet they skipped Remembrance Day. They made a video message, but didn't say a single word of support for the sacrifice of the British Armed Forces, the veterans, or their families. Look, I'm an American, and I find it reprehensible that Megan wore her poppy, and I'm not alone. Expressing that it makes one nauseous to see Meghan Markle wearing the poppy commemorating the noble dead of the nation. She is so disrespectful, so a lot of people agree. The very next day, Harry put out a last minute press release for the military. He wanted to show everybody that he was concerned about the veterans. It's what you would call last minute damage control at its worst. Personally, I'm surprised he even remembered to do that since he crashed the Pat Tillman gala in Chicago over the weekend. And as you'd expect, Harry behaved the very same way like he had back in July when he accepted an award at the ESPY ceremony. He completely disrespected Pat Tillman's mother's wishes. Prince Harry, oh God, of all the low of all lows, why accept an award that the mother of the person whose honor the award is in does not want you to receive, and for good reason? I'd also like to acknowledge 
the Tillman family, especially Mrs. Mary Tillman, Pat's mother. Her advocacy for Pat's legacy is deeply personal and one that I respect. The absolute gall of him. He's collecting the award on behalf of other people. What is wrong with him and his wife? How can they not see how jarring this must be for Pat's mother and family? It beggars belief. They don't want him to pick up the award, even if he believes he's picking it up on behalf of others. He should respect that. Any last shred of credibility that he had is well and truly gone. How embarrassing. Just like Megan doesn't give a damn who she steps on, Harry, the only thing he's concerned about is finding anyone who'll shout they love him, even if he has to pay for it. Not like he's not used to that anymore. Just saying. One has to really wonder, what would Queen Elizabeth II say today about Harry? About the grandson who betrayed her, betrayed the family, and betrayed the country, and then authorized Netflix cameras to start shooting while she was suffering from ill health issues. We'll never know. But now we have found out what her plans were right before she passed. The Queen planned to end Harry and Meghan's lease on Frogmore Cottage and force Prince Andrew to downsize. More bombshell revelations from landmark new books serialized by mail. Talk about using one stone for two foul birds. Queen Elizabeth was simply brilliant. A once-in-a-lifetime icon with a huge heart and a grand spirit to boot. But she had enough. And can you really blame her? Harry was no longer the boy she knew growing up. He had become the man who willingly molded himself to Meghan's beliefs. And in her temple, you better believe, they only worship one thing. I mean, Dory actually taught Meghan well. You know, move in, grift, and leave, get your paycheck. That's, that's the way I see it. I mean, that's where I, I would say most of her attitude was taught to her by her mom, even though her mom wasn't around growing up. As for the D-lister, she could only go on so long pretending to be something she's not. It was inevitable that the public would finally see through her facade and find out she was a phony. The media, by the way, have been blasting for two months in the headlines how she treats her staff like a dictator in high heels. So recently, you had an insider share Megan's seven-word jab at the press. Her response was nothing but pure delusional diva. She simply stated, it's not my job to coddle people. And it's precisely that egomaniacal character that has her getting bitten in the butt time over time. Just take a look at the latest election results. Walmart Wallace and her doormat didn't get the outcome they were banking on. And now the fallout is just around the corner. She was in her 90s and hearing this stuff, I think they broke her heart. No, I think, it was horrible. I think they it really hurt her very. But bad. if he's if he's lied on his visa form, he doesn't doesn't, know, doesn't the truth need to come out? We'll have. I to, mean, should should he get special privileges that nobody else does? No, and we'll have to see uh, if they know something about the drugs and if he lied. They'll have to take appropriate action. But hey, the Megans don't need to sweat it. They just bought a bold hole in Portugal. Apparently, it's part of their emergency escape plan, or it's simply Harry's private getaway when he finally decides to make a break for it. Either way, it doesn't matter because there's no returning home for him. The UK just sent a message loud and clear. There's no coming back for you, Harry. Uh, do, do you think there's a chance that Trump would end up deporting Prince Harry? Well, I think um, Prince Harry is very well situated in California. I think it suits his uh, worldview. And I think he should stay there. I'm not sure we... we uh, we need him back in the UK at the moment. No, so. no. Whether Harry ends up getting deported, being shown the door, getting divorced, or Megan loses it all, everything that's happened to the couple is exactly like my grandmother once told me. Anything that begins with a lie always ends in tears. This is going to be no different. It sure seems like divine justice or karma that the fortunes of the Sussexes have taken uh, such a turn uh, over the past year. You know, bad behavior and bad judgment have been catching up with them. Uh, you know, now with Donald Trump's historic landslide last week, I imagine there have been some sleepless nights in Montecito.
News just broke that Megan is desperately lonely. Well, hold on to your hats because coming this Christmas, she's going to be launching a new charm offensive. She wants to try to rebrand her image, win a few friends over, and then woo the public back to love her again. Well, good luck with that. But that dog just don't hunt because Megan's going to be too busy trying to keep her business afloat. See, you got Harry and David, the 90-year-old gift basket company, just filed a suit with a U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that ARO is too similar to their trademark of Royal Riviera. So that means America Riviera Orchard is back on hold. Plus, all of Hollywood and corporate America just got told to run for their lives. Run away from Megan and save yourselves by Vanity Fair's famous former editor, Tina Brown. She's a perfectionist about getting it all wrong. She really is. Her issue is that she doesn't listen. She hires all these people, asks them their opinion, and then doesn't follow it. She does what she wants to do, and all of her ideas are total crap, unfortunately. Now that Tina has spoken, it's the end of the road for Megan. Combine that with the latest interview from Diddy accuser Adria English, who lays out some serious allegations about her European royal prince. Who were some of those uh, major celebrities that Diddy actually trafficked you to? Jacob the Jeweler. The others are from European countries and of a royalty. The opposite of being smooth. If you have smooth arms as opposed to hairy. Now, if you like this video and found value in it, hit subscribe, smash the like button, and share your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think the Megans are going to do next? and share this video all over the internet with everyone you know. In case you didn't know, I am streaming multiple days a week. Check the YouTube community posts or my Twitter at George Molo. Sometimes it's on Mondays and then every Wednesday with Slayer Unchained and every Sunday with Slayer Nation. At the same time, 2 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. UK time. I hope to see you there. To win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is, we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.